everything's messy. Everything's messy because it's building, rearranging, we're redoing the fire pit, moving it, changing the designs. But I'm going to go ahead and show y'all because it'll be a while before I'm completely done because I'm changing some stuff up. Okay. Changing some stuff up. I absolutely love my garden, right? Like, check this out, y'all. My miniature roses. They don't get much bigger, so I went ahead and planted them here with some gnomes because I like it. This already has the holes in it. It will be going up on this. I'm going to paint the stump and everything. Y'all, I dug this hole today because I need this walkway and these roots are way too high. All right. So I dug the hole. I chopped this one and collapsed it in there. So that will be buried enough. This one is good to go on the bottom. This one on the top is the issue. It's going to, it's still above the walkway level. So we been slowly chopping at that one, but I went ahead and dug underneath because it makes it easier. <sighs> so this is going to be my little garden fairy area until it ever falls down and dies one day. We still got to flatten the top, paint it, all that good jazz. Then I'm going to plant flowers and stuff all around it and bring the walkway this way through. Um, my dad dumped some, even though he wasn't supposed to be out of bed, he was afraid his tractor was dying because his tractor hadn't been ran since January. And I can't back it out of the thing. I have no clue how. It's a very tight area. So he ran it for 30 minutes the other day. Brought me multiple loads of the rock. Multiple loads of the dirt. So now I just got a shovel from here. Um, so I'm really excited. He would have brought me way more dirt. But I started to get overwhelmed by this is more dirt. Than I have anything to do with right now. And this ain't all the dirt. Because I've already been putting it in pots. Mom gave me a bunch of other big pots. And I still got to fill this one. I'm trying to save the, um, what do you call it? Tomatoes that hadn't gotten planted yet. They're over here still. They're still savable. I'm still working on getting them room. I went ahead and planted some here to save them. Um, we got way too many tomatoes, y'all. Just way too many. I'm going to do, yeah, okay. Here's plans. Here's some plans. It's just going to take a little bit of time. These are some blueberry trees. So this area is going to be my blueberry area. When dad feels better, we're ripping this sucker out right here. I can't chop it down because this is one of his trees. He wants to replant it. Um, if this one dies because it's really, really brown, or if he decides, he says I can cut it back a lot. Um, later in the future, I might go in here with some more garden beds. Okay, it's all cost money, so you know, I have to do it slowly. Um, over here, I'm going to be building a four um, wide, eight long, eight feet tall or six feet tall little garden shed so that the lawnmower and weed eater and all these little tools here can go in there and don't get destroyed. Um, yeah, I got tools everywhere right now because I've been working. And we all know I have ADHD and I just lay shit everywhere. And that's, you know, always complains about that. But if I have a designated place that it like I should, I will be doing that. Oh my gosh, y'all. I have been weed eating, like pulling weeds like crazy. I gotta get my gloves on tomorrow and pull more. There's so many weeds. These are my peppers. Peppers. So, let me just show y'all. I have more garden stuff I have to put out and stuff. But look at this bed, y'all. So I'm going to be building a lot more three layer high boxes. They're not much more money at all. Um, on the bottom, I have a lot of pine straw, a lot of tree uh, stems, you know, broken branches and stuff. Then I have regular sole and it's about three to four loads of the compost sole. And it does really well. Like, y'all, these marigolds are gorgeous gorgeous they're so pretty so pretty this is my basil look how huge it's gotten it's just whew, taken off taken off i was very adamant that every single thing got basil and marigold um so these are more tomatoes 
Um, this little pot's not doing it well. I think I might be moving, moving these marigolds. We'll see and just use it as a decoration thing. Um, some people have really good luck with these kind of containers. Some people don't. They're really good for strawberries. I have a bunch of terracotta for strawberry ones. Um, so, of course, you know, me and my uh, peacocks everywhere. Everything's peacock. Peacock city. I love my peacocks. Love them. And I get them on sale. So, okay. So, now, for this area, I've decided, see, this is a garden like rose garden with some flowers and stuff but I've decided that I'm going to redo it um I'm going to try making boxes around my really healthy ones because I really don't want to dig them back up this is a huge huge red rose bush it's just I've already dead ended it it had which is cutting all the dead blooms off um so and there's tons of little miniature let's see little miniature roses i can't even see this on here but there's all different ones all up in here so instead of it being one messy bed we're gonna cut it back down meaning take some of the ground away because this is good so the compost soil right here you see we're gonna pull it to the side it also has a lot of the bark stuff and i am going to create something Kind of like this, except not these front ones. Just see the back ones, but we're going two and three high. All the way across here. All right, that's going to give me some more. Um, at least I think I want to face it that way. Like, I really, I love my roses. I want them together. So maybe I will do something a tiny bit similar to that over here. Just not come out as far. Because I want some more garden area and I want one the two right in the front for the roses I don't know that's gonna be a lot of work and that might be in the fall to be honest um so it's a work in progress work in progress but I'm just so in love with this the side makes me very happy um and that's why I would like to extend this so when I go over here I kind of see the same thing um, or I might just make a really, really long one, a couple high, um, as a flower bed or something. I just, I'm just, my brain is just trying to think how to tie it all together. Um, I'm also going to make it not come down this far since this is the grill area with the smoker. It gets really, really hot. I think I'm going to end it over here, do a little walkway over here, um, Later in the future, I might be building a little thing back here to hold garden tools as well. I don't know. Oh, no. I could save money and build the thing back here, to be honest. But I kind of like the idea of being at the other end. But it would save money if I built it here. I already have a back wall. I have to think about that. I have to think about that. I still got to clean up in there. Um sprayed my salt and vinegar on all the weeds the other day so they're starting to die sprayed my cart the other side looks great i'm doing it for mingo pink it was red um i left the bottom red because i could care less um i'm trying to dry it so i can do a second coat you can't even see the red um when it's flipped over i'm not gonna waste spray paint to do it but uh yeah yeah it's about my day talk about my day i'm exhausted i really didn't get any sleep um had my daughter's appointment i went in and she's like i don't know what's wrong with you i can't tell you with these labs i just don't know what is going on with you um i can't pinpoint one one thing or another everything's messed up um so it's not like a arrow straight to hey something's wrong with you so because i was 17 when i was diagnosed with fibromyalgia what if it was wrong because we didn't even have smartphones back then right no one really carried around a phone back then we didn't have all the tests we didn't have all the medical knowledge i was 17 years old they ruled out a couple of things and said bam you have fibromyalgia 
no one ever went back and looked. Um, so tomorrow I have to go in and I have a crap load of blood work because it has to be in the morning. There's rules about the time frame for some of the blood work. Um, like the testosterone has to be between 9 and 10 a.m. Mandatory, I was told by these labs. Um, that is being ran. A whole entire, um, autoimmune disease panel is being ran. An allergy panel is being ran. Um, y'all, she said, be prepared to be dizzy. I have so much blood coming out of me tomorrow. And that's all she can do. And if this don't, she, and she's sending me to her endocrinologist. She's not my main doctor. She is brand new. She went into the hallway to talk to another doctor who is a male trying to get his advice what could be wrong why am I gaining so much weight when I am honestly I can prove it 17 to 20,000 steps a day I can prove what I'm eating right or not even eating and we're not even talking about my stomach issues let me tell you he said maybe she's just fat because she overeats maybe she's just lying I can prove it. I can prove it. Like, I can't prove what I'm eating, but I can prove that I am doing my steps. Okay, I can prove that part. And if his theory is, I just need calories in, calories out. Um, no. Do you know how many calories I would have to be eating for 20,000 plus steps a day? No. No. Like, I was so irritated, but she's new. She's a baby. Like, she's PA. Just got there just got her certificates and everything i didn't want to get her in trouble because he's the boss because i wanted to bitch about what i just heard him say in that hallway i did not want her to feel uncomfortable i did not want to get her in trouble especially since monday i'm going to a whole new clinic a whole new doctor one who's an actual doctor who's my daughter's doctor one who can follow me um she did put in like i said the referral for the endocrinologist so maybe they can get to the bottom of it too. Um, then we got all this blood work we're going to find out. She's also doing a real insulin test um, to see how much insulin is actually in my system. Um, so, yeah, that pissed me off. That's what people used to say to me when I was 434 pounds and I only ate 600 calories a day. <sighs> but anywho, we are going to get on top of this. We are going to figure this out. That, that is the goal here. We're not giving up. We are going to go around the whole house with the electric ones. See the electric ones? We're going to run them all the way around. This is so we can walk. Um, other than winter, because it's too cold at night, but the rest of the year, we could walk outside. Um, because we also, we got a bunch, my dad's got a bunch, and I gotta go buy the landscape poles for it. We are running it down the driveway as well, all around. See, circle driveway. It's a big circle driveway. It's bigger than a football field, so that we can be walking. Because, listen... Okay, those birds drive Dino insane, and I love it. Love it. Love it. So I did get seriously behind because I got seriously behind on my inside work. Like, you know, laundry, dishes, cleaning, organizing. So I spent the last four days doing that and barely working out here. Oh, yes, it's coming along, coming along. Oh, see, I have my terracotta ones because next year I'm doing strawberries. And I've been watching um, some hacks. So I have these big, strong garden states. They're four feet tall. So you drill a hole in the center, and I got to poke out all the little water holes area. Drill the hole through the center to give it extra stability, stability or whatever word I'm trying to see, say, <laughs> so that I can do it for strawberries next year. I'm so proud of myself, y'all. I, this is the only thing making me not have a depression right now because my weight 
it's really giving me a depression like so bad um but the truth is as long as I don't look in the mirror and I don't pay attention to a number on the clothes I'm actually very happy right now like like I said as long as I don't look in the mirror because I hate what I look like forgetting that part this is probably the most peaceful, happy, carefree that I have been in years. And maybe it's my garden. Who knows? Maybe. I don't know. I just know for once I have like a peace that I haven't had in years of my life. And nothing seems to bother me other than like wishing my weight would go down but knowing that right now I'm medically as impossible um is also a little bit of a release knowing I'm not doing anything wrong it's my body I have to fight against but my garden's really bringing me some peace my mom said she doesn't even recognize me because <laughs> Even a year ago, you would never ever catch prissy me in dirt. Ever. You would never catch my hands in the dirt, much less my nails getting dirty, much less sweating and building like this kind of stuff with implants and being outside. Oh, no, no, no. Prissy me would be crying and freaking out that I got a tiny bit of dirt on my body and I hated it. And yeah, I don't know. Something just changed inside me. Something just changed and snapped and was like, be one with nature and, and grow things and, and get your hands actually into the soil of the dirt. I don't, I barely use garden gloves. Um, like, it's weird. It is weird. But for the first time in my life, I have this weird peace that I've never had before. So... If you're going through a lot of hard times and you're, you, you need to find some peace, try to make a little garden. It's kind of therapeutic. Putting your hands in the dirt. Planting something. Nurturing it. Watering it. And it growing. Yes, I have cats. I'm taking care of them. I grew a kid. All that stuff. But this is totally different. This is completely different. Watching these plants grow. I get so excited every day to come out here and see how much they've grown. And yes, I know, around here we have issues with wilt and we have issues with deer eating them and raccoons and blah, blah, blah. But I know that might come, but I'm happy right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> and later in the future, we will, when I get some money, be private using the pickets making a privacy fence because it's way cheaper to make it yourself than to buy pieces already made we will be completely enclosing this area right here with a fence so we won't have to worry about the deers and stuff like that of course you know raccoons can find the way in anywhere but at least we won't have to worry about them so i'm having one mill today i haven't had any of these wraps since last week I think when I filmed um, my salon that I ate. Um, I've done tests on these. These have never raised my sugar. It's 15 total carbs um, which comes to 4 net carbs but this is it for me today. I'm having one meal literally. I went ahead and gave myself 4 slices of cheese because it equals 2 ounces. I have two slices of roast beef in there, two slices of ham, a tiny bit of lettuce, four round circles of tomatoes, a little Parmesan cheese, and not tomatoes, pickles, four round circles of pickles, and a little lettuce. And that's my dinner, and my breakfast, and my lunch, all rolled into one, plus only one coffee today so far. So... Yeah, I don't know how I've managed to go all day with only one coffee, but I've been drinking a lot of water because I've been sweating today.
Shrinky, stop that. You're not going bye-bye. You already twisted yourself up. We're going inside. I'm convinced this is why they wake me up. So they could take over the bed. What crap is this? What the heck? What? what I'm sorry. I'm disturbing your beauty sleep. All right. So we had to get rid of the couch like I told y'all. We tore it up. Got rid of it. I bought, my mom had a twin frame, the cool therapeutic kind, so it's really tall. And then there was a mattress on sale, one of those foam 12 inch mattresses. <coughs> so it came in today. I'm setting that up like a couch in the same position my other couch was in, which might have been the no no. Because Thank God I put it in this special waterproof bag that's made for beds. Okay. And I had three comforters on top of it. Do you know she peed on it instantly? I can't get her to stop marking her territory. I don't know. The vet literally said there's some cats you just can't stop. It just will keep happening. Um, so I put it in a new position. Um, right now is not the position I wanted in, but so far she hasn't gone near it. And of course we scrubbed it down. Um, even though, you know, we scrubbed the plastic down and stuff, even though it didn't really touch it. I was worried. What if it went through? We don't want smell. Um, like we didn't scrub the bed, but you know, the plastic cover. Um, so I put it in a new position and it's long ways against the wall. Um, like you would a normal bed. Okay, I've been suffering 99% from heartburn at night, even when I don't realize it and I'm waking up, wheezing, coughing. The doctor said my whole entire wheezing issue is from my heartburn, my sinus infections from my heartburn, my taste buds, which are fried because I can't stand the taste of anything unless it's very, very salty um, and it still don't taste like anything really is fried right now. Um, but y'all, y'all, if I did not prop my pillows up on this to watch TV just now, which I haven't yet, but y'all, y'all, my head isn't falling. This is like the perfect, up. Uh, I am so up and I can't do this on my bed in there because there's no wall back there. It is a cut out frame with little cubby holes and everything. And every time I've ever tried this, it doesn't work. Plus it fringes over onto Dino's side of the bed. Um, so I can't use these as that pillows to prop myself up because they're too wide. Y'all, if it just, like, for now on when I'm having heartburn episodes, I already told him, even if the couch works the other way, um, well, this, I'm calling it a couch, even though it's not because it will look like one when I'm done. Um, I'll just flip it around on my really bad heartburn until it, my heartburn goes away because I am waking up in the middle of the night choking to death. I can go to bed, but no heartburn. And I'm waking up choking it up and coughing like crazy. It is heartburn. It is the gur. It is the acid from my stomach coming up. So he might just get to sleep by himself for a little while. Of course he was celebrating because that means the fan would be coming with me. Because he loved the fan in Hawaii. He had two big, giant, huge industrial fans blowing on us. Which was way too much for me. Every time I visited. But here... He doesn't want a fan on. He doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want it blowing, which makes no sense because he spent his whole life with fans. But I can't live without a fan, period. It has to blow on me. It doesn't matter how cold it is. I have to feel it on my feet or I have like a panic attack. I just, I can't handle it. Um, if I'm sleeping, I have to have air blowing on my feet. And I will go to bed freezing. The house will be like 66. I'll fall asleep freezing, feel great. And I'll wake up with no blankets on me, drenched in sweat, on fire, and I lower it down to 64. Yeah, I, I am dying at night, drenched, drenched in sweat around 3 a.m. It starts, and I am just on fire until probably 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and this, this has been going on for three months now, and it's getting worse and worse. Like, so the doctor's really nice, but she's only concentrating on my weight gain not going by any other symptoms 
like I told her when I was diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome, I had no cysts on my ovaries at that time. They didn't diagnose me that way. They diagnosed me by all my symptoms and um, like some hormonal imbalances. But that's usually how it is. Like your thyroid panel can come back fine, but you have all the symptoms and you actually have a thyroid problem. Like if you're a really good doctor, you would know that blood work doesn't ever tell the whole story ever because it's only telling what's happening at that moment when they drew that blood. It's kind of like blood sugar, right? If you draw my blood, after I eat something. It's telling you what's happening after I eat something, right? The next you could come back and I could eat something different and it's different or I could be fasting and it's different. It's telling you what's happening then, what's been in your blood for a little while or something. Like it's it's not painting the whole picture. Um. So she is also sending me for an ultrasound um, just to make sure, you know, checking that whole ovaries and all that area which i'm fine with even though i hate it i hate them i hate them i hate them so much because i have to pee constantly and my bladder hurts when i have to pee like it is urgent i'm in pain i could cry um if i push it even five minutes like i've had to push it like 10 minutes me into pee before and she's like you have to drink a 32 ounce glass of water and not pee for an hour yeah, see the last two times they made me do this, they told me the same thing. I'm not listening this time, and I'll tell you why. Because the other two times, I have a condition I've had my whole life. My bladder will not empty. It is impossible. So when I drank that, both times, they were like, oh my God, your bladder is about to burst. Literally, go pee. We can't do it. They send me pee like six, seven times every time trying to drain my bladder, and it never does and then I'm in severe pain because there's way too much in there it won't drain and then they have to go up the other way and I don't want them going up the other way okay because that's not comfortable at all and I'm allergic to the things they use to make it a little more comfortable um you know the little gel stuff um and then I break out and I burn inside there for weeks until it heals again because I'm really sensitive like even the ones that supposedly water base no no I'm very sensitive to that kind of stuff um so I'm gonna have my big coffee that I have and I'll hold my pee but I'm not having extra that morning because <laughs> I know my body I've gone through this over and over again um because she wants to see if I have more cysts or anything and that's why I was like well I never had cysts there but it's okay because hopefully they'll ultrasound my um, uterus too because they haven't had an ultrasound in that area in a long time. And I just want to make sure there's no tumors again or anything growing up in there again. Anyways, so, so yeah. I had so much blood work, so much, and I'm waiting, waiting to see. 15 vials. Well, I stopped counting at 15. She had more. But I know for sure 15. I actually got very nauseous and very sick. Um, she warned me beforehand that um, if I start to faint, tell her that I will probably get really nauseous because it had to be um, on an empty stomach and I had no sleep on top of it all. Um, so I was very woozy that day. I'm dying to see the results. Like one is an allergy test, which I don't know. I've never... I lean more towards the skin test, but the last few years, or the last four times I've gotten it done, um, in the last, maybe it's been 10 years now, um, they only do blood work, which is kind of weird to me, um, because I always get different results, but we will see, we will see, we will find out if my allergies have changed any. <sighs> And after watching Wendy's video, which I still got to go finish because Dino keeps talking during it and I really want to pay attention because it's the sensitivity using the hair. Um, I was watching her 
let's do it. And it made me kind of want to do it because it's really cheap to get one person done. It's cheap for two as well. I think it's like $69 and I think one is $39. Um, but I would like to compare the sensitivity using my hair versus the allergy test one, right? Of course, then Dina goes on. You're going to let someone have your DNA? Some company have your DNA? Well, let's get real. All the lab places are really just some company, right? Papa, are you okay? You jumped in the box and it fell down. Freaks are out. Uh, right? We've all given plenty of DNA in our life. I, um, I have my fingerprints and everything on file. I have had, um, background checks and clearances. So, yeah. I'm not so worried. Maybe Ancestry DNA I'm a little iffy about because that puts it out there for everyone to see. I've always wanted to do it, but at the same time, I'm really scared to do it. Especially who owns it now. <sighs> yeah. I need to get some sleep in a minute. But I'm really thinking about sleeping out here tonight. I am. This is so comfortable. My head's not flopping in the bed. I can't use this special pillow. So I am flopping and falling all night. Yeah. Right now, I am not about, oh, oh my gosh, it looks so gorgeous in here. Oh, it's so perfect. No, I'm about convenience, y'all. I've gotten past that stage. I realize I have eight cats who are afraid of people, so people aren't coming in here. Um, so, and who do I know anyways? Let's get real. Um, and besides, I have the most beautiful porch and gonna be front yard when I'm done with it. I know it looks like a backyard because the driveway's in the backyard. It's kind of weird, I know. Um, but it's beautiful out there and it'll be even prettier when it's done. So, that's what I'm focused on. And just let these little blocks have some fun in here. I'm not letting them tear my house apart though, if y'all are thinking that. But like I said before, I was ready to get rid of the couch. I always wanted, I used to do this before, take twin mattresses. <sighs> I get those really big, beautiful pillows and body pillows and stuff that you can change it out whenever you want and put it for the back. And then I've even made side arm things before. Um, and it's so much more comfortable than the couches and so much cheaper and so easy to clean. That's what I really like about it, right? All right, I am going to shut up and put Wendy and Harry back on.